Hey, so I've heard from a number of people, uh, I'm interested in so many things and it seems like I can't decide what I should focus on in my, in my research or in my scientific career. So if you recognize yourself there, maybe this video is going to be interesting for you. This is gonna, what I'm going to talk about now. So first of all, in principle, being interested in many things is not bad. It's actually good because that way you can effortlessly connect with different topics, and with different people. And very often the way progress happens in science is due to exactly these people that can connect among different topics and people and research fields. This is actually how a lot of this happens. So having this broader interest in a lot of different topics can actually come in really handy and you can play it to your advantage. But the downside of course is there are several aspects to that and one of them is that this is sort of the recipe for imposter syndrome, right? When you, you know a little bit of many things, but then in every conversation you have with any one person that may be like a specialist or an expert in that topic, it seems like you know very, very little. And so when you compare yourself just on the basis of these individual conversations, it seems like you don't know a lot. And so then you feel like, what am I even doing here? And I know exactly what you're talking about because this is also the way I failed a while ago. And maybe I'll make another video about that, but um, this is kind of the recipe for this, right? So because you have such broad interests and you talk to many different people, but then always these other people seem to know more than you. But just because the specialist nerds mean in every one of these conversations know more than you, um, it doesn't mean you, that you don't know anything. Of course, it means you have just a broad over you. You can talk to all these people and, and so you just need to learn how to deal with that situation. I think a lot of it boils down to how this all unfolds during your career. I think very early on, it's very good, like say during school or undergrad and college or as you study for your, yeah, your undergrad degree or your master's degree, it's, it's great if you have touched on a lot of different topics because you will have saved away some of these things for later use and it can come in very handy later on. And then again, later on in, in your career, when you have a, maybe have a permanent position or you have reached a job that you like, whatever it may be, then it's also advantageous to start being broad again because there is really a need for integrating things and for synthesis and for people to have an, just an overview of what's going on. So it again is handy again later in, in your career. However, in sort of mid-career, sort of I would say PhD, studying for your PhD and sort of maybe a, a postdoc after that or so, when you are too broad and it seems like you're um, meandering <laughs> around uh, the various fields of science, then it really is a significant disadvantage, I'd say. Because it's very important that when you do your PhD and your, your postdocs and maybe, maybe even your early faculty days, let's say, um, it's very important that you stand for something, that you're being identified with a topic that when people think of whatever, I don't know, soil aggregation, like they, they think of you. And um, I think that's, that's just super important in that middle stage of your career. So PhD student, postdoc, early faculty position. And that's because the system really rewards consistency and it punishes uh, shifting too many times around. I think that that is, very clear that in, in this mid-career there is a real price to pay if you move around fields too much, generally speaking. Now, mm, what can you do? I mean, there's, a, there's a, several things that you can do that basically turns this broad interest of yours into an actual advantage. So one thing that you can obviously do is when you pick a research field, you can specifically pick one that is at the intersection of uh, some research fields. Mm. Whatever the case may be, I mean, it could be an intersection of um, ecology and, and mathematics or whatever, or uh, where, where some new things are emerging. This is usually where the exciting stuff also happens when, these, when such fields like collide, or sometimes this is also possible to do in, in certain graduate schools that are made specifically for bringing people together from different disciplines. So if, if that's your thing, you know, I mean, you don't have to completely forego <laughs> that interest and have to 
and you don't have to sort of specialize too much. You can specifically pick topics where you have to draw on different fields more than normal. I mean, you always have to draw information from various subfields, but there is definitely more interdisciplinary areas of inquiry than it would be with others. So I think you can specifically go for research topics that are in the intersection of different fields. And you can really make it your focus, your explicit research focus to bring things together. Your, your, your topic can be um, the synthesis, the taking different bits of information from related fields or even not related fields at first sight, and then put them together using specific techniques. I mean, this is field is called research weaving by some, and um, this consists of systematic mapping and meta-analysis. So systematic mapping is you know, getting a broad overview of sort of related fields or even a large field. It can be as broad as you want, basically. And you can draw the information uh, then from, from very many different topics, you know, like in ecology, if you don't want to specialize on aquatic and terrestrial, well, you can ask a question and you can ask, how is it different between aquatic and terrestrial systems, for example, or between forests and grasslands and agricultural fields and lakes and rivers? If it makes sense to ask that question, often it does, right? If, if it makes sense to ask a question that is so broad that you can test it with various systems or in various systems, then this is what you can do. You can actually focus on that synthesis. And it's definitely not trivial. I mean, this is a very difficult thing to do. It's, um, it's almost like an art form to do these uh, systematic maps correctly, to cover all the literature adequately. And, and all this, this is, like, this is like collecting data in an experiment. It's just a skill that you have to learn. And then there is meta-analysis where you focus on data that is a bit more related to each other, it's not as broad, but you bring it together from many, many, many different studies that could have been done, let's say with plants, but the plants could have been from forests, grasslands, agricultural fields, and so on and so forth. And then you sort of integrate all these data and you learn specific statistical techniques, how to deal with this uh, with these kinds of data and that uh, is also um, uh, an own field that you have to learn <laughs> and it's uh, s pretty difficult I'd say but it's also very rewarding and super interesting and it's specifically for people that maybe cannot decide really if they want to just work on grasslands and this one type of fungus or something you can really integrate and pull in the information from all these different studies maybe hundreds of papers and your work can be the one that um, of the one that brings it all together. I think it's a super cool thing. So you see, I think that um, if you use it right, <laughs> uh, these broad interests they can they can really work to your advantage. But I think you gotta you gotta make sure that you play along with the system if this is what you want to stay in um, academia, and um, so pick the right time point when to broaden, when to focus, as I explained. But also then there are really research topics and specific techniques that you can learn and then you can become more integrative and more broad. And that way you can make the whole system work for you instead of against you. So thanks for listening and see you in the next video.